For our last full day at Leila, we decided to give the wildlife a break and take our jeep full of people on a field trip. But right before we were off of Leila's grounds, we saw a herd of Bisa oryx. Even from far away, the beauty of these animals could be appreciated. Just look at those long horns. I finally got a good shot of these shy antelopes. And just to the other side of the jeep, I caught a glimpse of something. It turned out to be a heart of beast, an animal very hard to find on Leoa. And after spotting that, I got a quick shot of a jackal. And we were on our way. After a short drive, we found ourselves at the Mount Kenya Animal Orphanage. The orphanage has been open since the 80s, and it is in association with the Mount Kenya Safari Club. Now for me, the word safari club usually means rich white dudes shooting large animals. But since Kenya is outlawed hunting, people now use the land for taking photo safaris. We just walked in the door and there's already something. A female eland and a young buffalo hung out with us as we toured the facility. And also behind us was a female ostrich. This place was a zoo. Or was it? I was confused. They had a sign stating that they weren't really a zoo, but they were a release facility. But I wasn't sure which animals they intended to later release and which ones would call this place their permanent home. As with release animals, you obviously wouldn't want them to come in contact with the public and get too used to people. The orphanage hosts thousands of local students each year to teach them the importance of saving their wildlife. Why even John Travolta came here once? That's Vinnie Barbarino to me. We watched as the porcupine enjoyed some corn. One of my favorite birds. We've seen a few on safari. The crown crane. This one's just chilling out with us. Birds sometimes freak me out. A worker showed us the place, and you can see how much he cared for the animals. Here he fed some monkeys some treats. And we saw a bush pig play in the dirt. I felt some cat eyes looking at me, and I turned around to see some cheetahs. I walked slowly through the park, but not as slow as this guy. This guy. That's the bongo. Two more bongo. I looked up and couldn't believe my eyes. Walking right behind me was a mountain bongo. What a beautiful animal. Now unfortunately this beauty caused them to be overhunted from this area. And that is why you won't find them out there anymore. But there are programs that we establish their populations around Mount Kenya. In a large pen something caught my eye. It was one of my favorite smaller cats, the caracal. Just look at those black ears. You can find wild caracals around in this area, but they are hard to spot on safari. Another small cat they had there was the Sokoki cat. <laughs> they are found in forests and as street cats on the coast of Kenya. There with its back turned to me was a hartebeest. What was confusing is which animals had free roam within the facility and which had an enclosure. Some had both, like these colobus monkeys. One in the enclosure, one outside the enclosure. Colobus monkey. Colobus is monkeys. This was another animal that seemed to elude us out in the wild, but we can easily see it here. I thought I had seen it all when the keeper took us across the road to show us two pygmy hippos. I couldn't believe that he went inside with them. We were okay seeing them from afar. I can think of two good and sharp reasons why I would never go in with them. It was an interesting place for sure. We then took off to do some shopping at the equator shops. Now the rule is if you can haggle them down to a fourth of the original price they wrote down, then you did pretty good. It is fun for me, but for some people the whole in-your-face experience is a little too much. It was funny as one of the shop owners actually remembered me from previous trips. That's where I bought my stuff at the Texas shop. 
at the Texas shop. And before we went back to Lewa, we visited a community program where women can work to help send their kids to school or just earn some income. As we received the tour of this wool shop, you could see the woman had such a passion for her job. And programs like this are key in helping the locals overcome the extreme poverty in the area. Plants they grow on grounds will help turn the wool into some cool colors. And from that, they create some amazing artwork. I just had to own some of this. Got my little wool line. It helps the local communities, well, helps the women of local communities. They work here and uh, they get to make little things like this and sell. Cool. This little wool line will remind me of the great programs that are out there to make this a good world for everyone, including the wildlife at Lewa. As we went back to camp, I was amazed at all the things I had seen that day, but it was kind of sad knowing that this was the last night I would spend in Lewa, and I wasn't sure when I would ever have the chance to come back. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Safari Lewa. For information on the Lewa Wildlife Conservancy and ways you can help other wildlife, please read the description of this video. Thanks for watching.